Welcome to the segment of Blue Gold Update. I'm your host, Alexis. And I'm your host, Rachel. Today we are going to be presenting the highlights of Friendship High School, created by a wonderful Friendship 2AV team. Friendship is all about their excellent sports team and the wonderful band. And so our first story highlights our Friendship football team, made by Canyon, Xander, and Elyon. I'm new to friendship, so it's a new opportunity for sure. Uh, looking at what our kids have done up to this point has been a, a great success. Um, I can't remember the last time talking with the coaching staff uh, that we've started the season off 3-0. and So uh, right now what we're really looking forward to is just getting into district healthy uh, and hopefully we can carry everything that we're doing currently over into a, a great district season. Uh, always looking at the opportunity of making the playoffs and, and uh, possibly winning that district championship. Um, my goals is to help my team and become district champs for this year. Uh, changes wise, you know, right now we, we just want to continue to be healthy. Uh, you know, one thing that we practice here is doing the same thing day in and day out. Uh, and that's that's develops that monotony. That way we get those kids on Friday night, Thursday nights, that they just play. We don't want them out there thinking. And, uh, you know, there's really not a lot of things to change uh, in terms of what we're doing. You know, we're doing things well right now. Uh, and when you're doing things right, you're doing them well, you don't want to change things very often. weeks we've uh, we've done a lot of good things our offense is moving the ball well uh, we're distributing the ball uh, to where it needs to be our special teams are making some great plays uh, you know we've had two games where special teams have been huge uh, and then defensively what I deal with most uh, you know those kids are flying to the football we've got 11 guys that are surrounding the football every time we're creating turnovers which creates opportunities for our offense um, you know, right now those things are what's doing really, really, really well. Uh, the most positive thing we've had is the lack of zero injury, injuries, and I don't want to uh, uh, stump us in any way there, but you know, as long as we stay healthy, we're going to put a good product on the field. Uh, you know, things that we've done bad that we've been kind of down on, uh, you know, there's always things to improve on day in and day out. Fundamentals, the technique, little things. Uh, you know, we're working on those daily, that's something that we focus on. Uh, the specifics of the game uh, are continuing to be there. You know, there isn't anything just glaringly bad, uh, but there's always little things to work on, and that's what we focus on. What a wonderful highlight. Next up is a presentation created by a group of kids that came together to create a story that encapsulates what it truly me means to be part of the Color Guard team and what it takes for them to represent our friendship band and football teams. I am the caption head, which is like the head captain. I spin flags and I am on the weapon that, line, so I spin rifles and sabers. Drop it on the top of your hand. You just kind of it. As a section leader, I want to do the most to help. So if anybody's behind on work, choreography, needs counts, I want to help out as much as possible. For every competition, I just make sure I have everything that I need. Um, the guard has to have their uniform, their makeup, all of their equipment. We have about five pieces of equipment if you're on weapon line included. Um, so it's a lot of money that you're holding in one. 
Um, and it's a lot to just carry around to make sure that you have. Um, other stuff is that I make sure that I myself am doing everything that I need. Um, that way I'm not holding my team back. Well, a lot of the times I'll practice with my friends, practice teaching them things, and then I'm always just throwing a flag around and throwing my rifle around. So. I think that I just do a really good job of keeping people's spirits up. Um, a lot of time it can get really stressful spending a lot of time with just a bunch of girls. And so I think that we all just have to come together and really just everybody come together, not just the captains, but the whole entire team. So. Most of it is really mental. There's a lot of physical things that go into Color Guard, and yeah, it's really good to be in shape, but once you're mentally prepared, everything just comes in really smoothly. I actually had no idea what Color Guard was whatsoever. The only way I figured it out was from my sister doing Color Guard. My sister was a lot better at me in rifle, so I've really been trying really hard this year to get better at rifle and it's been a, a real bad struggle. But she was a really good captain and she took a lot of charge in leadership. So yeah, I guess she kind of inspires me to take my leadership position. <laughs> Excellent presentation. Now that we have gone over friendships more physical activities, we can now take a deep dive into their digital activities. Next up, Canyon and Xander are going to provide you with a great insight on the Friendship Esports team and how their coach allows them to work together. Some of my players have started off being like really low rank and I've got to see them get up to like the champion level play. So it's just cool to kind of see that growth and progress happen with them and, I, and to know that I kind of played a role with them. Yes, I want to do that. That sounds awesome. Um, since that time, I've learned a lot about League of Legends, which I didn't know much about. And I've learned a lot more about coaching and like leading a team instead of just playing the game, which is what we need a lot of fun. get in a classroom but you need in the real world um, especially for kids that play video games stereotypically they're kind of quiet they're to themselves and so this forces them to work as a team and kind of change the way that they play and be more uh, participatory in a group activity which is absolutely beneficial for them today I'm going to talk to you about physics come on in girls let's go this is the first rocket to get humans to Mars I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. 
You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hey, Adelina. How are you? Hi, Meals on Wheels. I'm Marco. I'm a college student, and I volunteer as a driver for Meals on Wheels. I'm very happy I did it. I think it's awesome meeting these people. I mean, they're so interesting. They've had so many wonderful experiences in life. You can tell when you go to see them how eager they are to share their experiences and their wisdom with you. I can see my grandparents in some of these seniors, and you know, when I think about what I want for them, if they lived alone and didn't have anybody to look after them or help them get food, you know, I'd want someone there who does what I do to make sure they're being fed. Your community helps to raise you up into the person that you become. Meals on Wheels is a great way to give back to that community. One of Friendship's many unique opportunities includes its theater program, but one of the most unique ways is how it works. Next up, we'll be showing a story provided by the practicum team at Friendship that takes a closer look into tech theater, into the tech theater program, and how it works. My name is Lindsay Pearson and I am the theater teacher and the, I do technical theater also. And I've been teaching at Friendship for three years. Um, I taught theater for four years in a long, long time ago when I first graduated college and then went and had my children and stayed at home, went and got my cosmetology degree and then I went and got my master's in special ed with an emphasis on deaf and hard of hearing. So I have a little bit of, of a lot. <laughs> That's what nightmares are made of. <laughs> the growth of students. Just seeing them going from being completely insecure about what they're doing to just creating unbelievable projects. Today we are making puppets. They have just learned three different types of stitches. They learned the running stitch, the whip stitch, and the back stitch and they are using two of the three of those stitches that they learned to make a puppet full on. But the only caveat here is that they have to make a fairy tale puppet and marry it to a monster, so it's a fairy tale monster. So you're gonna see stuff like uh, Goldilocks and the three bears with like crazy teeth and crazy tongues and googly eyes. And I just, I love it. I love everything about sharing stories and sharing the human experience on stage. Next up is our teacher highlight, created by Charlie, Miranda, and Madeline, that discusses our great American Sign Language teacher, Miss Thomas, and that provides more details on how sign language is a useful tool for everyday life.
As we were filming these stories during homecoming week, we had interviewed one of our floral design teachers at Friendship High School to get more insight on what is involved in the preparation for homecoming. This story was created by Leo, Miranda, Charlie, and Madeline. So this is Principal and Elements of Floral Design, and I also teach Advanced Floral Design. In this class, we actually focus on our floral arrangements. We do one for each month and kind of like all the rules that go with them. Kind of like if you have a vase this tall, you want your arrangement to be this tall. And right now we're working on homecoming mums and garters. It's really fun, everyone's nice, and we're learning how, we're doing making homecoming mums, so that's exciting, and garters too. But overall, and Miss Skinner's like a really good teacher. So, a braid or like a chain we learned was like a heart chain. So you'll get a ribbon and like fold it, and then you'll staple it, and you get the other half, and then staple it, and it makes a little heart. We learned like a checker chain. A type of braid, it's real simple. These braids are pretty easy, so that's good. I'm looking forward to make, like, learn how to do um, set vases and like do floral arrangements. This one's a big one. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just going to be like a class that you just use to get that um, fine arts credit, but I like it a lot. It's pretty cool. Fun. Like it's not like a regular class. You get to do other stuff rather than just like learn. You get to learn flowers and you get to do crafts and stuff. I'm looking forward to make like learn how to do uh, set bases and like do floral arrangements. spot where kids can be creative, kind of have a stress-free environment, and just kind of a fun place to be. Hi, I'm your host, Smokey Cole Bear. Filling in for Smokey, because after 75 years of... Only you can prevent wildfires. Turns out there's much more to say. Nearly 90% of wildfires are caused by us humans being careless, dumping our used barbecue coals willy-nilly. I guess Billy was wrong. We did start the fire. That's why I respect Mother Nature and her trees, whether coniferous or new car scented. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Bring it. You guys later. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. How about some one on one? Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry. I'll, I'll see you later. disaster movies instead of preparing for them, a natural disaster could be coming soon to a town near you. So, before you watch another movie trailer, or dresser how-to, or quiche cooking show, or whatever, take a minute and build something that matters. Click below to build a natural disaster plan for your family. Sometimes, the things we do or say can make others feel hurt. Such a weirdo. Excluded or isolated. 
Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind pizza. wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope we don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Back to the topic of digital activities. We look to our computer science team for insights on how to run programs and the difficulty of coding. Made by Elijah, Mia, and Ashley. Find your seat, have a seat. Get in there, let's get crazy. Do you want to get crazy? Oh, yeah. Dude, this is going to be crazy. We're going to make this text that you were making the course back. I'm Nicholas Copeland, and I'm a senior. I teach computer science, and I'm the esports coach. Uh, computer science is a lot of things. It's at a fundamental level, how does a computer work? In this class, it's more about software development. We talk about how to create a program out of code, um, but it can be a lot of things, especially at a higher level. We talk about data science, we talk about hardware um, in the colleges, but here at our, at our school, it's mostly program development and software development. Why don't you sit at your old computer for today? Just keep letting that log in and then hopefully next time it'll be faster. I used to teach math and one day I was on a UIL trip as a chaperone and I heard kids talking about if and else statements and I was like, that reminds me of logic that I took in college. Um, I became the computer science advisor for UIL and the more I talked to other teachers they said you should really teach the class. So I taught myself how to code and I started teaching the class about eight years ago. So I actually never went to college to be a computer science teacher. I was going to be a math teacher my whole life, and then I fell in love with computer science. It was the first couple of years were especially a struggle because I didn't have a teacher to kind of like guide me, um, but I think it actually helped me a lot because now when a student struggles, I know what that feels like because I was there not too long ago, you know? So when I taught math, it was easy to me. And so when a kid struggled, I'd be like, I don't know why this is so hard for you, but when a kid struggles in this class, I'm like, yeah, that was hard for me too. Like, no wonder you're struggling. I can see your frustration. Um, I would just want to say that right now, as you've probably seen in this, in this class, that it's mostly boys, and that's a, that's a problem. Like, girl coders are really, really well sought after in, like, Google and stuff. Like, they want to get uh, women coders. So if you are a person who's really good at math and really enjoys solving problems, regardless of your gender or, or your background, you should totally check out computer science. That it's not just for boys, it is absolutely for anybody who's really good at solving problems. Last but certainly, certainly not least, we have a robotics team who have worked hard to design code and build robots, also filmed by Elijah. Well, our robotics club is made up of several things. We learn about mechanics, we learn about electronics, we learn about um, financing, building a financial plan to sustain our program, we learn about public speaking, uh, we get guest speakers that come in that have engineering experience, robotic experience. This program, it's a student-driven program, so that means the students are the ones that um, are doing the planning and figuring out how to purchase things and what goes with this order and who's going to speak in front of a group of judges when that time comes and what do we need to design to make our program attractive. Um, then go back. So on a daily basis I will usually come in and we'll start by designing what we're wanting to do and make a plan and then later on um, we'll kind of divide up into our teams of someone will be building, uh, putting together the materials, others will be putting together electronics and we're just collaborating, figuring out how that's all going to go together 
and yeah. I have spots for people that are artists, um, are designers. I've got uh, students that are interested in programming, which our robot has to be programmed. They have to write a, a code. I have guys that just want to build it. So my goal is to have a spot for any student that has a passion to, to do something to come and be involved. Thank you for joining us on our first episode of the Blue Gold Update. If you have any story ideas, please notify us. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page at friendship.tv. Stay safe and see you next time on the Blue Gold Update. Mike Rowe on the student organization known as Skills USA. Well, everybody talks about high unemployment. It seems to me that the real problem is the skills gap. There are opportunities available, millions of them. Skills USA is on the front line. They're encouraging soft skills and specific skills. They're the connective tissue in between the opportunities that exist and the hopes that a lot of parents and kids have for their own future. Learn more at skillsusa.org and microworks.org. Skills USA champions at work. Hey, let's check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. To find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org.